Like the canals in the city that had given him his name, Andrew Venice had a tendency run to the shallow, and he could not rein in that tendency in his thoughts as he sat down on the hard plastic seat booth to interview with Yvonne Perrin. The curvaceous red head was stacked like the cards in a crooked poker game, and exceptionally well preserved. He felt a twinge of regret, and something else, as he considered their tawdry surroundings. They were sitting in a humble Hardee's hamburger shop near her place of work. Thank you for meaning with me, Miss Barron, he began to say. He could have bitten his tongue as he realized the double entendre. Inadvertent, but double, nonetheless. Please, call me warm. She responded brightly. Yvonne. The name was a derivative of Ivan, itself another version of John, a word with sexual connotations that made themselves known to Andrew. He was a cop, after all, and had a cop mind. Emotions boiled through him, but he controlled them, even as he and his fellow officers of the law strove to control the scum who raged in the streets of Atlanta, the city that he loved so and had sworn to protect. I am sorry it has to be during my lunch break, though, Perrin said, and she opened the plastic pod that held the item she had chosen from the signboard menu, a humble hamburger. I had a very busy day today. No, that's okay, Andrew said. Then he blurted, We could have got some place nicer. He was an exceptionally well-set-up man, after all. No, this is fine, Yvonne said. I do like hamburgers. She opened the greasy bag that had been given her by the equally greasy young Hardy's attendant. Her hair was the same rich red as the ketchup she dabbed on her freedom fries. Andrew had opted for the roast beef sandwich himself, and even though it was, as advertised, sliced thin and piled high, already it was as ashes in his mouth. Hamburger sandwiches had never been his favorites, but to see the smooth sesame seed studded bun that now luxuriated between Yvonne Perrin's neatly manicured fingertips was to no envy for the succulent sandwich they held. How he wished that these delicate digits could hold him! But enough of that. I need to talk to you about the Archer case, he said with grim resignation as he bit into the sandwich and felt the rubbery meat product part before the blades of his incisor teeth, one of which was chipped and needed bonding. Henry? Yvonne asked. Oh my god! She paused mid-bite. I thought that was uh, an accident. Poor Callie. We're just exploring the possibilities, Andrew said. His mind raced at the suggestiveness of how own words. How could he say such a thing to a woman he had only just met? And yet Yvonne Perrin's flashing green eyes and a cantilevered bosom seemed to offer possibilities that Andrew would dearly have loved to explore. How is his widow holding up? Yvonne asked. She batted her eyes at him. Such an attractive woman. I do home that she isn't too devastated. Well, it's hard not to be devastated when your husband dies in a mysterious car accident, even if he is 20 years older than you and could have reasonably been expected to predecease, even given modern actuarial trends, said Andrew, sympathetically. Henry took such good care of himself. Yvonne said, Even the physically fit suffer when they end up with an engine block in their laps, Andrew said. <laughs> he watched her eat. He liked watching her eat. He liked the way her delicate fingers lifted the sandwich and her bright white sharp teeth shredded it. From living flesh to meat to shredded meat to meat patty to shredded meat again, it was as if the humble beef were experiencing the entire cosmic cycle, only to become living flesh once more thanks to the biological processes of the lovely Yvonne Perrin. I don't like to think about that, Yvonne said. Why exactly is it that you wanted to speak with me, Detective Venice? Andrew could think of a thousand things he would like to say to her, but he limited himself to asking, Did Archer have any enemies? KGB, the Stasi, Shining Path, this guy I know named Popeye. Of course he did, Yvonne said. He was a millionaire, 
the bloated parasites of the ruling class always engender hatred among the workers, after all. I mean, specific enemies, Andrew asked. Yvonne thought for a long moment. You mean people who would want him dead? She asked pensively. Dead or terribly injured, Andrew replied, enjoying another bite of tasty, hearty roast beef. People survive car accidents, after all. Well, I certainly never wished him ill, Yvonne responded, her eyes lit up as with Illuma from within by the fires of desire. No, ill is the last thing I would have wanted him to be. What kind of man was he? Andrew asked. He wanted to light a cigarette, as he always did after a meal or sex. But the repressive restaurant regulations imposed by an increasingly authoritarian government forbade him even that simple pleasure. As his heart broke under the weight of Yvonne's obvious high regard for the dead man who was not there with them. Very virile, Perrin said breathily. An old man, fond of roast car driving and barbecue cooking. Barbecue, Andrew prompted. For some reason, the reference rang a siren in his memory. Well, grilling, really, Perrin continued. They, the archers, would host cookouts at that big house of theirs. He would insist on doing all the cookery himself. Andrew shook his head and snorted in silent surprise. A millionaire industrialist who dabbled as a backyard chef? It could only happen in Atlanta, the city where tulips grew on trees. He specialized in hamburgers, Perrin continued. Thick, juicy hamburgers. He would start from scratch, often raising the steer himself, then slaughtering and butchering it and grinding even the best cuts. Then he would take those huge, virile hands of his and shape the meat into thick patties, Thicker and juicier than even the thickest and juiciest of steaks. Then he would grill them himself like a master surgeon. He really was amazing, she said. A tear trickled from one of her electric green eyes. I will miss him so very much. What about his wife? Kelly? Perrin asked. Her voice held a faint note of disdain. Oh, she's very nice, but she can't cook. That's not what I meant, Andrew asked. Would she have any reason to want him dead? And does she have any knowledge of automobile mechanics, such as how brakes work? Callie? Oh, don't be silly. She hasn't worked on a car in years. Perrin said, giggling at the very thought of her slightly older and slightly less well-preserved, but still a comely friend, with a wrench in her hand. Not since that Chrysler she kept running with split and bailing wire back in the 80s. That's not what I meant either. Well, not really. How did she get along with her husband? Andrew probed. Fully half his sandwich lay on the tray before him, unconsumed, like the leftover fruitcakes at Christmas. But he was not hungry any more for food or for Yvonne Perrin. Silently, he cursed himself for falling prey to her sinister charms. He was sure now that she had said something of import, but he could not recall it, and knew that it would be terribly rude and suspicions-making to ask the lovely and a vivacious person seated before him to repeat herself. Curly loved Henry, Yvonne said. Just the other day she told me that she loved him as much as she had the day that they got married in Las Vegas. I want to cry when I think of what I said to her after that. I said how could she tell when they were both so drunk the day they got married in Las Vegas. She leaned close. That's where they met, you know. In Las Vegas, drunk, at a casino. Andrew shook his head and snorted in silent surprise. A millionaire industrialist with a gambling habit who met his future wife in a Las Vegas casino after having too much to drink. It could only happen to someone who lived in Atlanta, the city where tulips grow on trees. Do you know what status of Henry Archer's will? Andrew asked. His will? Why would he need a will? He was married, you know that. 
Yvonne said. She looked at the remains of his meal and her tongue was a bright red finger the color of flame, either because of the ketchup she had consumed or because of her own robust good health, as she liked her lips. I love my lips. I'm still hungry, she said. Her own food was long gone. Do you want anything more? No, Andrew rejoined. He shook his head. No, I don't think so. In fact, I have to leave shortly for another interview. Oh, Yvonne asked. Is this an open investigation? I thought it was just an accident. That's probably all it was, Andrew agreed. But we have to look into these things. He grinned crookedly. Being a detective isn't like they make it out to be on TV, Yvonne. We don't all live in New York or Los Angeles, and we spend a lot of time looking into things that other people take for granted, like car accidents involving billionaire industrialists. He took his hand in hers, trilling to the feel of the blood that pulsed through her deallocated veins. But I enjoyed this, he said. So did I, Yvonne said, replying to him. Georgia on my mind. As always, this exhibit is made possible by the generous support of my incredible Patreon donors, particularly Michael Fittori, Zanazira, and Brake System BSE. If any of the anti-cop rhetoric in the commentary box has bothered you, that's too fucking bad. And... To everybody else, thank you for watching and thanks for being you.